Portland in the 18th team in Major League Soccer. It's the City Portland's championship. It is great to be home. Sports Sunday with Orlando Sanchez. What is good, everyone? Welcome to Sports Sunday. My name is Orlando alongside Art Edwards. Just feels good to be back in prime time, doesn't it? It does. I'm loving it. I'm glad they let us do this again. I am too. <laughs> we'll see how next week goes. You're right. For, for the time being, it is week two of the NFL season, and we've got lots to get to tonight. But you're going to want to stick around for my conversation with Bruce Barnum. Man was excited to have a home game. It's the most fun I've had doing an interview in quite some time. <laughs> Fresh off a win over Ohio State, the Oregon Ducks had an opportunity to recover from the bumps and bruises and get right before the Pac-12 schedule begins, taking on FCS opponent Stony Brook, who they beat 48-7. But the goal was to get through this game without any injuries. Mm -hmm. Well, about that. Having your quarterback sacked on back-to-back -back plays is not the way you do it. Anthony Brown Jr. just gets blown up. Ah. Then he took another sack on the next play. Brown left the game at the end of the first half and did not return. Walking off the field at halftime, he was favoring his neck for what that's worth. Coach Mario Cristobal was asked about his starting QB. Well, he took a pretty good shot there at the end of the half, and um, they were just making sure that he was okay. Uh, we expect him to be okay, and he looks good, so... Uh, we expect him to be healthy for the week. <laughs> Coach Cristobal called the first half a, of play on the line of scrimmage below average on both sides of the ball. The second half, the Ducks flipped the switch and imposed their will. And now we know who the backup quarterback is. Yes, we do. That's Ty Thompson. And he was solid, throwing a couple of touchdowns. He was 6 of 9 for 82 yards, leading Oregon to four scoring drives in his debut. Nice. Third string QB Jay Butterfield also got some work in. He completed two passes. All right, Art, the defense delivered. Oh, yeah. Forcing four turnovers. Verone McKinley III had two of the Ducks' three interceptions. The man continues to call his own <laughs> shots. This week he said he would get a pick within the first two drives. And what do you think happened? He did it. Yeah, he did it. Love it. So the Ducks win big as expected. They move up one slot to third in the AP poll, leapfrogging Oklahoma. Oregon survives the non-conference. They're now 3-0. Now it is on to that Pac-12 schedule. So, Art, what should we take away yeah. from this game, man? Well, they did exactly what they needed to do for the most part. You know, just get the win. Yeah. You know, score some points. You don't want anybody to even get nicked up. That was, that was the only thing you said, Art, right. about it. You were like, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Okay, so people on social media, some are a yeah. little, little panicky about that first half. How do you yeah. feel about that? No, I'm not panicky about that. They didn't show anything. Yeah. They just, let's line up and play. Let's get out of here. Similar vibes to that Fresno State Absolutely. game, right? No doubt. Okay, well, let's talk about those Oregon State oh, Beavers. Yeah. Are off to their best start since 2015, improving to 2-1 and one on the season. And they did it by shutting out Idaho. Mm -hmm. We rolled to Corvallis. The Beavers were heavy favorites in this game, and they showed why. Dominating from start to finish. Scoring on their first four possessions. Chance Nolan setting the tone there with the touchdown pass to Tyjon Lindsey. Then, B.J. Baylor. Deshaun Fenwich, they rushed for touchdowns and the route was on. Oregon State chalked up 438 yards of offense, wow. held Idaho to just 192 total yards. That's the fewest since 2015 when they beat up on Weber State. So they kept the Vandals out of the end zone. The Beavers broke out that turnover chainsaw on a couple of occasions. <laughs> yes, we need more chainsaw, please. <laughs> Oregon State rolls to a 42-0 victory. It's their first shutout since the 2008 Sun Bowl. Wow. And for the first time in the Jonathan Smith era, OSU has a winning record at 2-1. Well, obviously really pleased. I uh, thought it was just quality play out of really all three phases. Um, I thought the guys came out with focus, some energy. Um, and for a defense to play 60 minutes of football and not give up a score is, is not common in college football nowadays. Really impressive. That's big, you know, to make history like that. In 13 years, that's really big. 
You like to see the defense smile like yeah, that, you do. right? <laughs> well, there's lots of first time since stats after this one, and they'd like to add another one to this mm -hmm. list next week. That would be win at USC for the first time since 1960. OSU is now four wins away from a bowl game for the first time since 2013. Crazy question for you, Art, but yeah. What stood out to you? Well, I like the fact that it was a shutout. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at college football teams, even if you're at the FCS level, mm -hmm. they've got kids who can play some ball. So to get that shutout, to keep that, I mean, look, Oregon couldn't shut out Stony Brook. Right. And I suspect Idaho is better than Stony Brook. Right. So. And I, I think with the Beavers being able to beat a team they were supposed yes. to is a good sign. And, and, and really beat them. You know, that was a, that was a very, very good sign. Could we be looking at a, a bowl game? Oh, Beavers? absolutely. They're on the right track. Maybe eight wins even. We got to start a Sports Sunday bowl game countdown. And every time so. they win, we can we, yes, X off and exit off. off. That's right. let's, let's work on that. <laughs> OK, Art, how about the Pac-12 conference? Oh. Looking for the culprits who have pretty much ruined its football season on the national stage. Spoiler alert, they're, we're staring right at <laughs> yeah, them. Right there. There what they is are. going on with that Pac-12 logo, man? <laughs> man. That describes it all. Art, it was the wildest game of the oh. night. Looked like UCLA had rallied to beat Fresno State. They scored with less than a minute left. They took a 37-33 lead, but then the Bulldogs, they had other oh, ideas. Yes, they did. And they went on an epic drive. We're talking six plays, 40 seconds. Jake Hayner with what turned out to be the winning touchdown pass. Fresno State gets the W, 40 to 37. They're now in the top 25. Man, yeah, that was a 75-yard drive. Hey, the Pac-12's tough, tough start includes five losses to the Mountain West. Ouch. Two losses to FCS schools. Uh oh. Three losses to BYU. Two what? to San Diego State. Ooh. And then you know what? BYU still gets to play USC and Wazoo. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to dodge BYU now. Man. You <laughs> yeah, want no you part don't, of it. You don't want them. Maybe you just invite them to the Pac-12, right? They're they're not cougar. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, oh, you're gonna go there. Yes, I Producer am. Producer Craig. Uh oh. <laughs> Now's the time for the show to go off the rails now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh man, Art, we gotta keep this thing. <laughs> Moving, says producer Craig. <laughs> this tweet last week, Seahawks win said it all. The Seahawks are winning comfortably. I'm confused. Well, don't <laughs> worry, Jeff, because the Seahawks are back, baby. Right. We've got the highs and lows from what was a crazy game. Plus, Bruce Barnum's got a big bill to pay. Man, more Sports Sunday still to come. And welcome back to Sports Sunday. Art, it was a huge day <laughs> no in doubt. Seattle. Oh, the yeah. Seahawks taking on the Titans. First regular season home game with fans since the 2019 Ooh, season. A long time. Feels good to have NFL football back with fans again. Yes, that's it does. For sure. The Seahawks 12 game home opening win streak on the line. I think they call that home field advantage. Yeah. Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett connecting on a big play in the first half. 63 yards for the score. Just like old times oh, with yeah. these two. Seattle built a 15-point halftime lead, and the Seahawks were cruising until it got to the fourth quarter, and the Titans unleashed the beast. Derrick Henry went off, breaking loose for a 60-yard something-something in the fourth. He added another short score, and the game was tied at 30 at the end of regulation. Tennessee rode Henry in the overtime, eventually setting up their main man for a field goal and the Titans win it 33 to 30. The Titans had 532 oh. total yards. Disappointing day for the Seahawks, only the fourth time in franchise history, according to ESPN, that the Seahawks have lost a game after leading by 15 or more at halftime. You know, they got a good football team. You know, they've been a playoff team for, you know, for a while now and they got some good players, so um, we, you, got, you got to be sharp. We got to be on our stuff, and, and we got to make plays. And, um, and unfortunately, it didn't happen. It was such a great day at the stadium. The fans were ready and rocking, and um, you know we wanted to reward them with with a, with a big win as well. And uh, we did so many good things, and then we we really hurt ourselves um, just too many times when you're playing a good team. It was like they 
took their foot off the gas. Right. It was just like last year. Man. You know, we wondered. I mean, they, they looked like they were going to take some losses early last year, mm -hmm. and they managed to work their way out of it. And today, you know, 182 yards rushing by Derrick Henry. Man, he right. was just. Yeah, once he gets going. It's tough. That is a tough team to beat. Yeah. And the Seahawks last yeah. week, we wondered, hey, this new and improved offense, no. different type of tempo. Right. Was right. there going to be more of this to come where they dominate a game and they finish? Right. We know it's right. difficult to do that in the NFL, but here we go again. Had the ball one time in the third quarter, Russell Wilson said. Not going to cut it. Nope. Nope. All right, Art. Time to take a trip <laughs> around the NFL to check out some of the day's best games. We'll start in Southern California where the Chargers played host to the Cowboys. <laughs> This one came right down to the wire. Dak Prescott drove his team into the field goal range, and that is Greg the Leg. <laughs> Greg Zerline nailing the 56-yarder to send the Cowboys to a 20-17 victory over the Chargers. Even in the loss, Justin Herbert, he put up numbers. He went 31-41, of 41, 338 yards, and a touchdown, but he also had two interceptions. Both teams now 1-1 one and one on the season. A from Southern California, we're going to go to North Carolina, my old stomping ground. Oh, there we the go. Panthers hosted the New Orleans Saints. Looks like a change of scenery is really good for quarterback Sam Darnold. He threw for over 300 yards. Say what now? And two touchdowns. Oh. Sam Darnold. Okay. That helped lead the Panthers to the 26-7 win over the New Orleans Saints. His replacement for the Jets, two four interceptions today. Ouch. Hey, while Darnold had a great day, the Saints' Jameis Winston, he regressed from last week. No touchdowns and two interceptions. That's what we know of him. This week, the Panthers are now 2-0. and And in one of the wildest games of the weekend, we go to Arizona. Cardinals and Vikings. Kyler Murray, he is just a magician on the field. Comes through with an amazing off-the-foot pass. But that's all right. We can take a look at Greg oh, yeah, the leg again it. because yeah. he was the man. Yep. But yep. what I can say is that Murray did go off for 400 yards. Arizona moves to 2-0. The Vikings are winless. All right, let's talk fantasy football for a minute. Host of the Locked On Fantasy Football podcast and NFL writer at Sporting News, Vinny Iyer. Welcome back to the show. Let's dive right into it. Your week two heroes and zeros. Well, you got to start with the big name, Tom Brady. I mean, this guy is on fire. He gives us five TD passes here in week two against the Falcons. And the return of Derrick Henry. I mean, we wanted this. A hammer, 161 yards and three touchdowns. you got to be also excited about Cooper Cup. Him and Matthew Stafford looking like a great combination here. How about some of your zeros? Well, I think Justin Herbert was a big disappointment, I think, in that Cowboys game. Just having the multiple interceptions. Clearly, he's still learning the new offense there with Joe Lombardi. I think you have to be disappointed a little bit in Miles Sanders and the Eagles and the Jalen Hurts. And they started out hot against the 49ers, kind of faded away. And speaking of the 49ers, it's hard to figure out anything that's going on there. Who should we be looking for on the waiver wire? Well, I think you can look at that uh, Cardinals-Vikings game. And Rondell Moore, if people aren't on him and people are all over Christian Kirk last week, look at Rondell Moore. This guy is just shot out of a cannon. KJ Osborne might be uh, kind of emerging here as a third Vikings target. He was their leading receiver over Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen in terms of yardage in that game as well. So one game, a lot of scoring. That's where you kind of look for those surprise uh, breakout players. Vinny Iyer, thank you so much for joining us here on Sports Sunday. Oh, it's time for that music. <laughs> Your Friday Night Flights Play of the Week takes us to Canis, where the band was playing strong. So was the Jesuit defense, Spencer McKilligan, oh. the massive reach, perfect tip to Tyree Blake. And that is what we call a pick six. Yeah. Jesuit gets a 20 to 10 win on the road. Make sure to catch all of this week's action on KGW.com and on our KGW YouTube page. Check it out. Yeah. The votes are already coming in fast for your next game of the week. But no lead is really safe. Never. Trust me. <laughs> Here are your choices. Forest Grove visits McKay and Kaiser. Wilsonville takes on Scapoose in a big 5A matchup. David Douglas visits Barlow or Reynolds at Glencoe. Log on to KGW.com slash G-O-W to vote. Voting ends on Wednesday. Vote early, vote often. We'll be right back. <laughs> Gabriel to throw. This is intercepted. A game that had no turnovers is right for them. And this is going the other way. Oh, Ray 
just turn of events. Uh, yeah, you bet. The Louisville Central Florida game to that stunning conclusion. Just a few seconds left. Pick six by Jalen Alderman gave Louisville the come from behind win. It's your Toyota Sunday sizzle. The Portland State Vikings picked up their first win of the season, defeating Western Oregon 21 to 7. So it's time to talk to the face of the program, head coach Bruce Barnum. Coach, how did it feel to be back out on the field at home for the first time in about 22 months? Uh, Orlando, honestly, it, it, ecstatic just to be playing football right now. Um, it, it's been too long, uh, nearly two years, and to get out there to see everyone. Everybody, I had everybody. I had the cheer coach. I had the guy selling beers, which he was busy. I had the grounds crew all out there saying, wow, you know, here we go. Uh, can you believe we're back, coach? So it was fun. It was a fun atmosphere. Coach, I, I got to give you credit where credit is due. Your, your promotion game was on point. You told our friend John Canzano you were handing out free beer to anyone who showed up. They, they got more than 3,000 people out to Hillsborough Stadium. Coach, that's a lot of beer. It was, uh, you know, it, it always, uh, it blew up a little bit, Orlando, how's that? Gonzano always seems to get me in these types of situations. You know, I was thinking uh, pandemic, college football hasn't been around, Let, let's kind of get a little crew and have, you know, beers on top of the roof like Shawshank Redemption, but uh, this, this blew up a little too much. <laughs> the Barney Beer Tent, I think you guys sold more than 2,000 beers out there. So I've been in these situations before going to the bar and I'm like, hey, the next round's on me. And then I look at the tab and I'm thinking, uh-oh, what did I get myself into? So coach, who's footing the bill on this? You're looking at him. I don't back. I, I don't back down. Um, it was. It was like 2016 beers, I think, Orlando. And uh, I, I said, when do I get the tab? And they said they're telling it. I'm expecting it either today or tomorrow. So um, <laughs> wait and see. What's the family think? How much trouble are you in for for that move? Okay, what was your next question, Orlando? <laughs> <laughs> Is this something you guys will do in the future ever again? I don't know. You know, they loved it. You know, um, the president was there. I heard everybody had a good time. Um, I was told by the brass immediately after the game that everybody had a blast. So uh, good for it. I hope uh, that brings somebody back. You know, I hope there's some, hey, you know, that was fun. Let's go back out and watch the Vikings play football. And it helped that you guys picked up a win. What would you like out of your team uh, seeing them at home for the first time in a long time? It, it has been a while. We're still rusty, Orlando. We're still rusty, and we have a tough one coming this week. We've got the uh, Montana State Bobcats. You know, we start conference now, so let's see what we can do. I like my team. They're leading themselves, Orlando. That hasn't always been the uh, case here. Um, issues come up. They don't even cross my desk 90% of the time because my, my leaders are taking care of it. You know, it's always been my philosophy, Orlando. If you create winners off the field, the winning, is, it's going to produce wins on the field. I love my football team. I love my leadership. And we got some talent. We got some fun people to watch. Coach, I appreciate the time here on Sports Sunday, man. Next one will be on me for you. How, how's that sound? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Timbers picked up another, another win. Goal in the 68th minute. George Fochive, five-match win streak. Beat LAFC. Woo! How about yeah. those Timbers? Let's talk golf. I'll see you on the other side.